Good morning, Golden Gate family. Good morning. Good morning. We're walking through uh, the Bible series, Walk Through the Bible, and this is the last lesson of this semester, and today we're going to talk about two kinds of wisdom. This series was talking about wisdom, and we're going to look at Look into the book of James again and try to look at what he's talking about, these two kinds of wisdom. Uh, for your reading, we're going to read James 3, 13 through 18, wisdom from above. Who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder, in every vow practice. We're going to dig into that a little bit. But the wisdom from above is the first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown, is sown in peace and by who makes peace. I love this quote here. It says, earthly wisdom is doing what comes naturally. Godly wisdom is doing what the Holy Spirit compels us to do. That earthly wisdom is the first one we're talking about. That, that's what comes natural. And there is a whole lot of things that we do that seem common to man, that, that just come natural. That's earthly wisdom. And we're going to talk about a lot of those today, or a few of them anyway. Talking about being zealous, talking about having passion, and those things that we were taught that was right. And what is, what is right, what is natural. We have a lot of things the world say is just right to do. We have this thing called being competitive, being first, mm -hmm. being the best. See, those are natural things. And James calls some of those things the money. But they just natural. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it wouldn't even, it may not even fall in what we would call sin. It's just natural. I just want to win at all costs. Yeah. I want to be the best. That's what natural, yeah. we were taught that. But it says, godly wisdom is doing what the Holy Spirit compels us to do. What the Holy Spirit tells us to do. What does, what does that Spirit move us? What does the conviction of the Holy Spirit tell us to do? That's that godly wisdom. Yeah. So am I going to follow this earthly wisdom or am I going to follow what the Holy Spirit compels me to do that lines up with the Word of God? See, a lot of times, see this right here, we'll get in trouble with this one right here. Because when you ask somebody, have they prayed about something? They say yes. Then you ask them, you know what? Is this what you believe God is telling you to do? You know what they'll say? Yes. But then you have to ask them, does this line up with the word of God? Come on. Then they'll say, I don't know or either no. Yes. But the spirit is telling me to do this. See, that's the plumb line. Does what I believe the Holy Spirit is compelling me to do, does it line up with the Word of God? That's the plumb line. Y'all with me? Come on. Man. And so we have to be careful to make sure we know that. Yeah. It says, but if you harbor bitterness, bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not boast about it or deny the truth. See, we have, guess what y'all, we all have some selfish ambition. That's natural, right? 
You, you know, we want, we want stuff. We want to live in a nice house. We want to drive a nice car. We want our kids to, to go to good school. Yeah. You, you, you know, we want to be the best at our job or sports or whatever the case may be. And that is simply selfish ambition. Yeah. But he says, don't boast about it. Boy, that, that is so countercultural to what we've been taught. Mm -hmm. If I'm the best, then you gonna hear about it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. And what I've been taught, that's what society says. When the football player go in and make the touchdown, yeah, then they do a dance. Yeah. They got yeah. a boast. That's what we've been taught. Well, that's that natural wisdom. That's not that godly wisdom that we're gonna look at today. It says, envy translates a word that can also be rendered zeal. Yeah. Envy. Zeal to be zealous after something. The Bible says that, that you can be zealous. It's not that zealous is bad, being zealous is bad, but I can be zealous in going in the wrong way. You see what I'm saying? Just because I'm passionate about something, don't make it right. Yeah. Because my passion may be misdirected. Hope that makes sense to you. It says a bad sense as an attitude that crosses over into inappropriate jealousy. See, sometimes that, that, that envy and me being jealous will, will cross over and I become jealous of you because I'm not as good as you. And then my zealousness will cause me to try to trip you in the race. Because I got to win. Yeah, and even yeah. if I got to stick my feet out there and trip you, I will trip you. Yeah. See, that, then if I'm the only, only one that wins, then that ain't from God. See, the tide is supposed to make all of the boats ride. Oh. Not just my boat, but that, that, that jealousy would say that my boat is the only one that need to rise. Wow. It says, that such envy is bitter suggested that it manifests itself in anger and harsh speaking. Mm. <laughs> See that jealousy will make me make me speak harshly against you. Because I want to win. I'm jealous of you winning. You, 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 you know, I I it will keep me from being able to rejoice with you when you win. Yeah. See when, when I have, when I'm in the right spirit, I can mourn with those who mourn, mm. and I can rejoice with those who rejoice. Even if I'm not winning. Yeah. Mm. I'm just happy that my brother is able to win. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm not envious of that. I'm not spiteful because you win. I'm happy that you are winning. I'm happy that you are being blessed. Mm. I'm not envious of of you getting whatever the Lord has for you. Because I know my time is coming. Mm -hmm. It gets even better. It says unspiritual is very opposite of spiritual devoid of spirit. Saying that, that when I'm unspiritual, it is very opposite. I have this spiritual void, this hole, this emptiness. It says the condemnation, demonic, reinforces the identity of this source. Mm. See, what it does is, then when, when, this, when this envy and this jealousy comes, then you know, I get to find out what the root is. Because the identity of where it's coming from, we get to start to see someone's true colors shining through. And you be like, oh, there you go. Yeah. Now I see you. Yeah. Now I can see you yeah. now because it, all of that, those nice platitudes that you have, they went away. Uh -huh. you, you see what I'm saying? When, when, when somebody else starts to win. Yeah. And that's that demonicness. That's, that's, that's the devil. Wow. And we want to move away from that. That's that earthly wisdom. That earthly wisdom says, trip him in the race so that I can win. Yeah. But that's demonic. That's evil. Mm. That's not of God. Mm -hmm. So let's look at what this next one here. I love this. It says all of this should be no surprise. Worldly wisdom leads to a bad outcome. Wow. 
And so we need to we need to know which wisdom are we using? Am I using earthly wisdom or am I using this wisdom that comes from God? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes we got to pray and sometimes we got to really give some focus because it's it's natural. It's not it's not necessarily sinful. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We, it's just I don't want you to win. I'm kind of happy at your demise. Mm -hmm. Or we may say, you know what? I don't want I don't want him to be hurt. I just don't want him to win. Come on. You know, I don't wish nothing bad on. on him. I just don't want him to win. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when something happens, I'm, I'm, I'm inwardly, okay. I'm a little gleeful. Yeah. yeah. Gleeful. You know, when I hear this bad news about you, I'm, I'm like, inwardly, I'm like, oh. But inwardly, I'm, hey, guys. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of happy at your demise. See, that's that, that's that natural thing that this world has taught us. This world has taught us to win at all costs. Wow. Yeah. 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 Natural. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> you either win or you lost. Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. Buy one of those second, second place trophy. As yeah. they say, you know, who won the Super Bowl? We may know. But we don't, you know, who they play, I don't really know. Because we only keep up with the winners. Oh. No good, no good. Let me hurry on. There is a better choice. There is mm. a better choice. A hardness of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The desired goal of one who seeks wisdom is peace. See, that's the desired goal, is we want peace. And, and we want that peace that passes all understanding, Paul says in Philippians. And this peace doesn't mean that it ain't no trouble. You see yeah. what I'm saying? It's the ability to be at peace no matter what the circumstances. Paul said, wherever I find myself, I find myself content. He, he wasn't saying that I had to have the, the perfect circumstances in order for me to be at peace. Yeah. But because I know where, 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 the, where the genesis of this peace come from, and this peace comes from God, I can be yeah. at peace wherever I find myself. Yeah. Those who are peacemakers, however, are said to sow in peace. And that's what we want to be. We want to be a peacemaker. See, some people just bring peace wherever they go. And some people just sow discord wherever they go. And what we're trying to be is peacemakers. And so, I'm going to ask a rhetorical question. That means you don't have to answer. Outwardly. Yeah. Which one are you? Wow. Do you sow peace or do you sow this call. That's good. You, you know, we have to know that. We have to figure that out for ourselves. But we know what the desired goal is. The mm -hmm. desired goal of God is that we sow peace. Mm -hmm. James 5 and 7 says, Be patient then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord cometh. See how the former waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn, autumn and the spring rain. Be patient. And boy, that's, that's something in this microwave society that we have, we're just so impatient. And so we don't, that doesn't come natural to us either. You see what I'm saying? Because we want what we want when we want it right now. And what James is saying is for us to be patient. Like that farmer. See, a farmer will plant in one season. Yeah. And harvest in another. Yeah. See, we want to plant and harvest in the same season. See, you plant, then you wait on the on the on the on the on the rain and the sun to come. Yeah. Then you start.
start to see something sprout. Yeah. And that takes patience. That takes patience. And that's what, that's what he is saying that we need here. Mm -hmm. It says, patience is required. Just as the farmer waits patiently for his crop, the believer must wait on God. Come on. See, we, we have to wait on him. As old people say, you know, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And so that's a hard one for us because we, that's a, you know, it sounds real good when we say, they that wait on the Lord will mount up. Oh, that sounds good. We get all excited, but we miss that part when it says in the waiting portion. See, they waited. And so we're in this season now, in this COVID environment, where people are having to wait. Yeah. And it's driving us crazy. That's why the numbers can't go down for one thing. You know why? We can't wait. We can't, we can't yeah, sit yeah. down. We can't keep them going outside. We, we, we restless and irritable and discontent. You know, like, man, I just can't take this house no more. I can't take this sheltering in place. I got to go out to a restaurant. I got to go to the beach. I got to do these things. Why? We can't, we can't wait on natural things. Even if my life depends on it. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Our life depends on it. This ain't, this ain't just waiting on the Lord. This right here is just, just staying away from humans so that I don't get sick. Get that. Mm -hmm. And so, so, you know if we can't wait on that, it's hard for us to wait on God. It's hard for us to do this. Check this saying out. It says, patience yes. is That's not true. the ability to wait but how you act while you're waiting. This is a quote from George Smiley. It says, patience is not the ability to wait. See, sometimes we can wait. Oh, but God is watching to see how we wait. Ooh. How do I act in the interim mm -hmm. while I'm waiting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Am I throwing temper tantrums? Am I acting a fool while I wait? Or am I waiting with contentment and passion you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or, you know, it's hard. You know, I, I, I find myself sometimes in this cold environment, you know, with my lips stuck out because I'm ready to go back. I didn't know how much I, I liked humans. Yeah. And human interaction with people. Yeah. You know? You, you know? Yeah. But, I, but I miss you all. You know, yeah. like, you oh. know. And I didn't even know that. But you know what? I don't want to risk my life. Yeah. And I don't want to risk yours. Yeah. So I'm going to wait. Also, I'm waiting on God. There are some things that, that I know that I'm planning in this season that I'm going to have to wait for him but to have a harvest in the next. Say that, man. And so that's what I'm trying to do. And that's what you need to do as say well. That. My time is well spent. Let me hurry on. It says, it says, you too be patient. Stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Wow. Stand firm and resolute. Let me, let me slow down if I get ahead of myself. It says, as Christians, we must be resolute and courageous while waiting on the Lord. See, that resolute means that my mind is made up. You, you, you know, that I believe that what God has promised me in this season, that I'm going to have a harvest in the next, so I'm able to wait patiently, and I'm resolute, I'm sure about this. Yeah. I believe this. And you know what? I'm going to stand firm on it. You know, and so, and courageous. It takes courage to wait on God. Because it makes it seem like you're waiting for something that ain't going to happen. Let's go back to the former. See, that former put, digs a hole and puts something in the ground and believes that God is going to bring rain, he's going to bring sun, and, and that that you can't see is going to sprout up <laughs> and come up. That takes some courage. Yeah. 
to, to, to put what you done, you go out and buy these seeds and put them under the ground, and you're trusting in this next season, your family gonna be able to eat, or you're gonna be able to harvest and make money off of this stuff. That takes some courage. That takes some faith. And you got to be resolute to believe that this is going to happen. Come on. It says the solution is for Christians to seek the wisdom that comes from help. When armed with it, we can put suffering into a larger perspective and be empowered with perseverance to endure until Jesus returns. I'm just going to end with talking about a few words. Uh, don't turn it out, brother. Just, just walk over there. Uh, it says to persevere. And that perseverance is to be able to push through against opposition. Yeah. That's what, see, if it ain't no opposition, you ain't persevering. Perseverance, as Pastor talks about leaning in, yeah. that means that I'm going up against something. Yeah. And to keep going and to have that endurance to keep going no matter what the circumstances is. Yeah. And then, I'm, then I have a larger perspective. That means that I start to see the situation more clearer and more better, and I put on some different glasses and I see life differently. Mm -hmm. I have a different perspective on this thing. I'm just backing up into this, if y'all will. Mm -hmm. And then it says, into suffering. I have a different perspective into suffering. Because sometimes what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. Come on. Right? See, all suffering ain't bad. See, some suffering is what God uses yeah. to grow us. To yeah. test us, yeah. to build up. Yeah. You, you know, it ain't all bad. Yeah. Sometimes that's, I just believe that that's God's prescription for growth. That's Come God's on. prescription for appointment. See, if He's going to appoint me to something, He needs to make sure that I can stand. Yeah. See, I'm asking for a whole bunch of stuff, but am I ready? Ready then. Okay. And so, the only way, you know, when you go to school, but go before you go to the next grade, there's always a test. <laughs> what I learned was that my God is not into social promotion. He just don't promote me to the next level without testing me before he put me at that next level. Oh. See, we want that social promotion. That means that if I come to class and I and I halfway act right and I'm nice and the teacher like me, they just oh, promote no. me. Yeah. But I don't have the I didn't get the aptitude. I don't know the information. They just uh, they just socially promoted me. Well, God don't do that. That's why we stay in the same situation for long periods of time because God is waiting on us to pass yeah, the test. Come on. Then He will promote us. Mm -hmm. Then he is sure, and then the other people, other people can be sure too that we're ready because they've seen us be tested publicly. And so that's the solution for us. Mm -hmm. And so there is natural, earthly wisdom, and then there is that wisdom that comes from God. Let's make sure that we're not operating on that natural earthly wisdom that seems right to man. There's a lot of things that seem right to man that's not empowered by the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, I'm trying to close here, the Bible says that we are going to be misfits. We're going to be misunderstood. So when I am operating in godly wisdom, it, it confuses the people that... that that are wor wor working, excuse me, on natural wisdom because it don't look right. Mm. And so if, if, if people can understand every decision that you make, you probably are not operating in godly wisdom. Mm. Some people ought to be saying, I don't understand how you can be patient in this situation. Yeah. I don't understand how you can have a good attitude in this situation. Yeah. I don't understand why you are waiting like you are waiting. That you are supposed to be misunderstood by the world. Wow. Because the, 
the world seen the light and comprehended, comprehended it not. So they ain't supposed to be able to understand us all the time. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank y'all for allowing me to share and hopefully this will be something that we can all use. Amen. Thank you.